Hi, my name is Stuart Tan and I'm from worldofnlp.com bringing you this video on NLP language patterns and how language affects you. What I'd like to share with you is going to be probably uh, initial awareness to NLP and how you can make full use of it. So just bear with me as you learn some of these pretty amazing things that you might have taken for granted. Now, as you take a look at how communication takes place, this is an introduction to the perception communication model in NLP. This indicates how we perceive information. If you take a look at that object right there, it's actually a representation of the side of our face, something like that, okay? So you see the eyebrows, you see the triangle which represents the nose, and the arrows represent information traveling into your mind uh, based on the external environment. So whenever you're absorbing information, you'll notice that you tend to uh, filter out a lot of information, and that's represented by the lines out there. And once you filter information, you actually delete, distort, and generalize a lot of information. So deletion, well, consider selective listening, for instance. If someone is nagging, you tend to kind of like shut things out. And deletion actually uh, removes a lot of information that you may need. Well, uh, certain things, miscommunication happens and so on. In terms of distortion, basically means that you uh, receive information that gets translated into something that you prefer to think of. So when someone says, you know, uh, ABC, you receive it and you go uh, ABCD, and maybe you add a little bit of stuff here and there. A lot of it has got to do with what you have, uh, and these filters will include your beliefs, your value sets, past memories, past decisions, and so on. And uh, sometimes we know that distortion actually creates a lot of miscommunication in the workplace and in the family. Uh, generalization is um, you know, frequently held beliefs. Some of these beliefs include, um, you know, that Asians are quiet and introverted, that uh, Americans are extroverted and so on. Well, these are just beliefs. And if you hold these to be true, the tendency is that you tend to look out for these cues and therefore hold them inside your memory. Now, guess what? Whenever you're expressing this in terms of behavior and language, it comes out through the same filters. So you're going to take all these things, you're going to blend it in accordance to what you believe is happening inside your own mind, not necessarily what other people think. And therefore, the saying in NLP that says, the map is not the territory. So whatever is happening out there in the world may not be what you're thinking. When I say the cat jumped off the table, sure, you know that there are certain things that have happened, like the cat was on the table and the cat jumped off the table, but that's not expressed in what we call the surface structure. And I'll talk about surface structure in a, a little while uh, alongside the consequences of ignoring deep structure. Let's take a look at the perception communication model in action. Let's assume that husband comes back home and uh, he's waiting for a relaxing night and he's basically come back home from a very long day's work and uh, is waiting for his wife to come and greet him because she's just gone out and uh, uh, to get dinner, for instance. So wife comes back and she's angry. She comes in and she starts screaming at him and he says, and she says, why do you keep throwing clothes on the floor? And you know, he doesn't expect this. Oh my. And this is just off the cuff. There's no interpretation. There's no reason why he come up with this idea, but that's what he comes up with. Therefore, his emotional state changes. He now feels upset, feels maybe depressed. But in reality, what she's thinking of is, hey, you know, I'm putting in so much effort to keep the house clean. Why aren't you doing your part? Um, no maliciousness behind it. Nothing to say that she despises him. It's his interpretation. Consider this. The surface structure is, why do you keep throwing clothes on the floor? The interpretation is, she despises me. So there's an equivalent. In NLP, we call that a complex equivalent, where uh, one idea is taken to be an equivalent of something else. Uh, but in, in reality, the deep structure says something completely different. And if we analyze the deep structure and we actually get the wife to say something, she may not even be thinking that she despises him. Maybe he, she just wants some cooperation and she's just frustrated. And maybe behind that frustration is a lot of love for the family. So as you think about this, what consequences are there when we misinterpret all this stuff? Well, let's take a look at the lessons in the psychology of language. First of all, language has a surface structure and a deep structure. Secondly, how we interpret the surface structure creates meanings in our mind. So if you chose to interpret it in a particular way, then you will have reality created right there in your mind. Could the husband have interpreted it differently? 
Sure, could the wife have interpreted had interpreted the uh, throwing of clothes differently? Of course, and it's all a question of the way in which we frame the experiences or reframe the uh, difficult experiences that we seem to meet. All of these are triggers from the external environment, and we can reinterpret these inside our minds if we have the tools and the necessary skills. More importantly, in order to bridge communication, we need to communicate intention so that deep, uh, deep structure is bridged uh, so that I understand what you're thinking and your intent so that I can mitigate between my immediate inter interpretation and your, uh, you know, blasting me, for instance. Take a look at some applications and implications. In the area of sales, imagine if your customer's in a bad mood and you come on and you just mention all the things that instead of establishing rapport, you just go for the sale. I mean, that's not going to be a good sale. It's going to be ugly. Imagine family relationships like what I've mentioned. The consequences of a father who doesn't understand what just went on in school and his son had just come home. Man, it's going to be a tough one, isn't it? No wonder they call it a generation gap. I think I call it a communication gap. How about in therapy and coaching? If you have to be in a coaching, uh, a coach role, how do you actually bring forth the best out of people? Especially when they just go on saying, you know, it's someone's fault, you know, you're a lousy coach or you're a lousy therapist. How do you take that? How do you interpret that? And how do you bring more meaning in that conversation? If you're a leader in an organization, imagine what that must mean whenever you are communicating with people, subordinates and people within your team. So the need for NLP is very clear. Number one, you need models for communication. First of all, you need something known as the meta model. I'd like to go into more detail with that in subsequent lessons, but it's about clarifying and extracting deep structure. This is what I use in order to model after people's mental blueprints for excellence, as well as kind of like untangling uh, the missing bits of information uh, in um, difficult communication. Uh, in terms of the Milton model, we talk about being able to embed deep structure so that you can sort of put in useful information that enables people to feel more empowered thereby making uh, them feel that you're inspiring, you can motivate them, and so on. And of course, we need capabilities for communicating. If the couple that we were mentioning earlier on in our case had responsibility for communicating their ideas and were able to assume positive intent across each other, then you'll find that their communication could have smoothened out. This takes a little bit of getting used to, and at the same time, it's not difficult to pick up. So for those of you who'd like to learn more about neurolinguistic programming, just drop by worldofnlp.com, drop me a question, drop me a message, and I'll do my best to assist you in developing capabilities for communicating powerfully and effectively.